Hello, everyone, and good evening. My name is Taryn Urquhart, and I'm the Arts and Special Events Programmer at the West Vancouver Memorial Library. On behalf of the library and the West Vancouver Art Museum, I'd like to welcome you all to tonight's art talk and panel discussion, Leon Coupe, My Dearest Kate. While I recognize that we are all in different places this evening, and with the help of some magical technology, some of you are even joining us from the other side of the globe. I would like to acknowledge that the West Vancouver Library and Art Museum reside within the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Squamish Nation, Tsleil-Waututh Nation, and Musqueam Nation. We recognize and respect these nations within this territory, as well as their historic connection to the lands and waters around us since time immemorial. I am personally grateful to call the Pacific Northwest my home, and I'm thankful to the Coast Salish communities that continue to protect the natural beauty and animal diversity that surround me every day. It has been my great pleasure to work with Hilary Letwin and our guest tonight to bring this event to our community. And I know that we are all in for a really great treat. And now I'd like to pass things over to our art museum's curator extraordinaire, Hillary. Hello, welcome. My name is Hillary Letwin and I'm the administrator curator at the West Vancouver Art Museum. I would like Vancouver Memorial Library for the chance to co-present this panel discussion that we are uh, presenting this evening. And I'm also delighted to introduce our new exhibition at the West Vancouver Art Museum, My Dearest Kate, Leon Coupe. This exhibition includes just over 120 postcards that were all drawn and sent by Leon Coupe from Paris between 1902 and 1912. Many of the cards were sent to Kate Barlow Hunt, Leon's fiance and later wife who lived in London. Other cards were sent to their son Maurice and additional family members. Leon was a lawyer by profession, but as we can see from the postcards in the exhibition, also an extremely inventive artist. On the back of commercial postcards, souvenirs with views of Paris, Leon drew portraits of his beloved, self-portraits, landscapes, and caricatures. These postcards were passed down through the family with many now held in West Vancouver by West Vancouver artist Pierre Coupe. Before we get to our discussion this evening, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to our panelists. We have Guy Atkins, a writer and an artist based in London. Thank you for joining us, Guy. Educated at Oxford University and Goldsmiths, the University of London, Guy has written extensively on the culture of sending and collecting postcards in Edwardian Britain, including in the 2014 book, Come Home at Once, published by Bantam Press. Their collaborative art projects explore the politics of history making, often through personal and museum collecting. Atkins has developed their multidisciplinary practice through projects with diverse communities, including people in prison for a project called This Small Change from 2020, presented with the Prisoners Education Trust and Kate, with peace campaigners in a project called And There Was Brian from 2018, presented with the Museum of London, and a project with psychoanalysts called 20 Years of Archive Fever, in 2014, presented with the Freud Museum in London. Our second panelist, Pierre Coupe, was a founding co-editor of the Georgia Strait and the founding editor of the Capilano Review. His work has received numerous awards, grants and commissions, including grants from the Conseil des Arts in Quebec, the Canada Council, the BC Arts Council. He received the Distinguished Artist Award from FANS in 2013, was elected to the Royal Canadian Academy of Arts in 2018, and named faculty emeritus at Capilano University in 2019. His work is represented in private, corporate, and public collections in Canada and abroad, including the permanent collections of the Burnaby Art Gallery, the Canada Council Art Bank, the Kelowna Art Gallery, and the Vancouver Art Gallery, among many others. So Guy and Pierre, uh, let's start by having you both explain your connection to the postcards in the exhibition that we have. Guy, do you want to start us off? Sure, thanks. Thanks, Hilary. Um, yes, I've been collecting and studying uh, Edwardian postcards uh, for about 15 years. And over the last 10 years, I've become particularly interested in hand-drawn cards. So where the sender has embellished the image on the front or has created a, a, an entirely, entirely new um, postcard and then posted it. Um, 
and I've been collecting and collecting and have been, really enjoyed doing so. Um, and then at, in 2019, I was at a, a market in London and which I'd been to many, many, many times before. Um, and I came across this folder of 50 postcards that Leon sent to Kate in 1903, 1904. And I was bowled over by them. I'd never seen anything like that, like these, like the folder. And um, eventually uh, decided to, to buy them and um, have become um, drawn into the, the amazing story that, that they show. And having uh, transcribed the 50 cards and, and Leon wrote an awful lot on each postcard, having transcribed them, I um, got in contact with with Pierre, who amazingly um, had put a couple of a, a few of those postcards already on, on on the internet, and so I was able to link up with him, and it's just been it's been an, an incredible experience to be able to to join the story. And Pierre, we we know your family connection, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about the Leon Coupe project and your connection to it? Well, it's such a big story in so many ways and uh, hard to summarize. Uh, but first of all, thank you for the introduction, Hillary, and thank you, Guy. It's so nice to see you both on Zoom and to uh, keep this project going a little bit further. Well, you know, my father never really showed us these cards at all when we were kids in, in Montreal. I think it was only later in his life that he brought them out. And my brother, I think, was the first one to see them. And I think my brother framed two sets of them for my father so that he would have them in the house in Montreal on Oxford Avenue. And that's when I first saw them. My father never made a big deal of the cards. He didn't talk to us about the cards. He didn't talk to us about my grandfather and my grandmother. So we have very little stories from him on in that regard. But then after uh, my father passed away and my mother passed away, the cards that he had were distributed between uh, uh, me and my brother and my sister, my brother Philippe and my sister Marguerite. And so that's when I began to uh, pay a little bit more attention to them. And uh, the cards that I received, I received one of the framed sets that were in Montreal and they were really badly framed. <laughs> and so I had them reframed and, uh, and I hung them in the house, uh, in the studio here in, uh, in West Vancouver. And I thought that, uh, you know, they were beautiful cards and I hadn't seen all the other cards in the family at that point. And I thought, well, maybe it would be a good idea in order to have a little bit of a legacy for our children and our grandchildren to uh, start getting the cards together and scanning them, perhaps doing a self-published little book just for the family, just so everyone in the family could have an idea of what Leon uh, did for Kate. And then uh, one day, Reed Shar, the, uh, the uh, director of the Polygon Gallery, came over for a studio visit. And as he was leaving, he noticed the uh, set of postcards that I had framed above my computer, above my desk here. And uh, he stopped in his tracks and said, Pierre, we have to do a book of these. <clears throat> and that was the first time that I thought, gee, maybe we should take these cards a little bit more seriously. Uh, maybe there's something here to share not just with the family, but to share with a wider audience. And so with Reed's uh, uh, encouragement, with that kind of stimulus, and then his int he introduced me to Lisa Baldessera at the Griffin Art Projects, and Lisa came to see the cards. And uh, she was generous enough to include them in a uh, group show at the Griffin Art Projects called Person, and about all kinds of matters of intimacies. And of course, these cards are very intimate cards. Here we are bringing them to the audience, to a public audience, and I can't imagine that either Kate or Leon ever thought that they would be seen by anyone other than the postman. <laughs> and, and I'm sure that Leon was quite confident that his handwriting was so tiny and so indecipherable that no one else would ever take the time to even bother to read them. So <laughs> here we are making them public. So it's been a project, it's become a project. And uh, so for the last four years, I've become more and more engaged with it and uh, trying to find out ways of making them available to a more public audience and then 
getting the family more involved in, in letting me have them. So uh, the next step was after the Lisa Baltasera show at uh, the Griffin Art Projects, uh, Darren Morrison from the West Vancouver Art Museum, your predecessor, Hillary, came to see them. And uh, he said, well, maybe we should do a show of them at the West Vancouver Art Museum. And then as often happens with all of my exhibition projects, one director or curator resigns, a new one comes in, and you came in, Hillary. And of course, you can't just inherit a project from a predecessor willy-nilly. You had to come and take a look for yourself to make sure that this was something that you wanted to be behind. And thankfully, you were. So here we are. And so at that point, I started to uh, contact all the various family members and ask them if they would be willing to lend their postcards in their collection to this show. And all of them were, and that was, I'm very grateful for that. And so they began to send me all their cards, which of course I had to sort and keep in, uh, you know, securely because I can't afford to lose any of their, their cards. And then had to begin the process of having them scanned front and back and the process of having them framed. And so it's been a long, long uh, journey doing all of that. I have not yet arrived at the point that Guy has, and Guy, I, I bless you for this, uh, Guy has transcribed all the texts of his cards. I haven't had a chance to do that yet. There's a lot more work to be done. So basically that's how this project came uh, developed and how we came to this point of having a show. So I have to ask, because I have my favorite, but I would love to hear what your favorite cards are in the exhibition. And are they a particular type of category? Of course, we've got landscapes, we've got self-portraits and portraits and caricatures. So uh, Guy, can you start by telling us which of the cards are your favorite? My favorite, I think, I, I think it's the self-portraits. Um, I think they really bring, and the portraits of Kate as well, but they seem to me to really bring out um, the importance of the collection as a whole, um, how how you get drawn into um, this, this this intimate relationship that's building over time. I think that's another element that's so interesting that this is a this isn't a relationship that's this isn't these cards um, build the relationship, um, and so they we we move from them being engaged the couple through to them them being married and. In that way, those self representations and those representations of, of Kate um, carry such a weight. It, you feel they're so charged. Um, I I love particularly the image of Leon Leon where he seems to sort of emerge from a, a sort of puddle of ink, um, and you get that sense that he's. And I think right through the cards, you get a sense of his humour his craft, but also this sort of perhaps darker side, perhaps a more anxious side. And he somehow is able to, to, to crystallize that into single cards. And so the cards where, yeah, he's revealing something of himself, I find really compelling. And Pierre, what about you? Can you pick just a few well, as your favorite? You know, I, I just love all of them. And uh, the more I look at them, the more I want more of them too. And, uh, and even this morning in prepare, preparation for this, I was scrolling through them on my iPad while I was having breakfast. And uh, gosh, you see more detail in them every time you take a look. So for such tiny little things, three and a half inches by five and a half inches, they, uh, they, they, they contain so much and they have such implications. But I have to agree with Guy that my absolute favorite is that dark self portrait where his face emerges from that pool of ink. And that's the one that we put on the cover. And then of course, the other favorite is what we have on the back cover and that's his portrait of Kate, which I think is so lovely. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just very moving to see those. Uh, yes, the self portraits in general, I love all of them. Uh, the calligraphies are so, so interesting. The monograms, his play on the, uh, the initials, K-H, 
And uh, uh, those, those ones always astonish me. Then I have a couple of other favorites. Naturally, I love the ones where he's either addressing my father right after he's born in 1905 or depicting him. And of course, those have sentimental value for me. Uh, but to, just to get back to the self-portrait, I have to put this in, the self-portraits, is that every time I see them, of course, I see my father because they are the spitting image of each other. To the hair, the mustache, <laughs> the nose, the way they had this dark-eyed gaze. I mean, my father's gaze could kill you from, you know, at 100 yards <laughs> if he wanted to. I mean, there was something, there's a sharpness there. Anyway, uh, then some other favorites. The uh, one of my real favorites, of course, that I come back to again and again, is the drawing of the uh, the card that has the drawing of the lizard that forms the C of our family name, Coupe. And then there's the card that he addresses to my father in 1905, where the crescent moon in an inky blue sky forms the C of Coupe. So all those kinds of plays are always interesting to me. There's more, and I could go on, obviously. <laughs> I think we all could. Well, and it's really nice, actually, to talk a little bit about uh, the way in which the images work with the, the text as well, because um, as, as you rightly say, these are extremely small. They're about three and a half by five inches. And within the exhibition, of course, we have them framed in sets of nine and 10 and 12, depending on uh, which family member they are on loan from or Guy in Guy's case. Uh, and we actually have these wonderful magnifying sheets that you can hold up to the card so that you can look more closely at the detail, uh, which can get lost because they're so small in size. And we've had a number of visitors pour over the cards with these magnifying sheets and, uh, and take in all of the details, um, which when we have 120 cards can take quite a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's it's wonderful to, to think about the interplay between the text and the image in these. And I, I agree, Pierre, I think my favorite is probably uh, the postcard with the moon as well. Um, there's also a really charming uh, poem, a four line poem yes. on that card. And it's, um, I think it refers to breastfeeding because Maurice has just been born. Uh, the Milky Way. And it's it's just completely charming. And you do get uh, a wonderful sense of Leon's personality in particular through not only the images, but also the text. And uh, he's he's playful and he's inventive, uh, really an extraordinary person. And he, and he, tells, he tells stories very, very quickly as well. I, I love um, this. There are Corrine, um, Kate's sister um, and Kate have visited um, Leon on one of the or it's in the aftermath of that visit and he describes the um the flat um after they've left yes. and how sort of bare it is and how the um the mattress that he's slept on is now back where it was meant to be and it was behind a piano and and it, and whereas the his um Kate and and, and Karina have slept in his bed and you get it's such an incredible um sense of, of, of the moments that he is trying to represent as, as well in that text and there I, I think there's something uh, something really magical in that in that he 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 has he's able to convey things so in such a sh short um space and so evocatively absolutely mm -hmm. thank you for that um so I, i'd like to just talk about the significance of the postcards uh, because, uh, as I said, Leon, of course, was a, a lawyer by profession. Uh, and the postcards are, if I'm not mistaken, entirely commercial postcards that have been picked up, basically souvenirs, um, many with views of, of Paris. Uh, and um, I just wondered, um, and perhaps this, this is more a question for Guy, what the significance of the commercial picture is on, on the recto of, of each postcard, because we're focusing, of course, on Leon's drawings and, um, and, and the text, but, um, but was he putting any care or thought into what the images were uh, from the postcard view? I, I think um, they give a sense of the, of the postcard as a as a technology 
um, and how they were how they were produced, and that he is using cards that are widely available. Um, there are lots of publishers competing for this this market that that's exploded in both um, London and Paris. Um, he, I think it's interesting um, that he does on at some at some points choose quite loaded cards I think in terms of picking out particular spots of Paris that relate to shared memories um, and he's got the choice of available cards in order, in order to do that and at the same time he uses um, cards from different art galleries and there are certain images within those uh, artworks um, that I think are very deliberate and in fact actually then get repeated in later cards. So there is the, the, the severed head of John the Baptist um, is, is, is one of the, the paintings by Moreau, I think it is, that's, that's from the Louvre. And that image then gets reworked into later cards by Leon of his own head, um, which he draws by hand and, and, and sends, sends to um, Kate. Um, and I think uh, the fact that that he is making objects that are widely available into particular gifts for Kate is really significant. And it and it's something that whilst there were other people doing that um, and, and using the postcard form as something um, to be to be played with, it, he is an outlier. In, in terms of going to the, ex the extent that he did. I don't think he's an outlier in terms of the number of cards that he sent. Um, mm. It was a craze such that uh, in London, um, uh, London went from, well, the UK went from sending sort of 300 million postcards a year in, at the end of the 19th century to sending close to a billion cards by 1914. It was that, it was that quick uh, an, an expansion. So they were objects that people were familiar with getting but in 1902 1903 it was it was pretty new and um, I'd love to I'd love to know what Kate made of the of the artworks that she was receiving um, because they would have been new in a, in a sense particularly the, the ones where he's he's using really kind of quite bright colors in his works um, they would have been incredibly exciting where he's, he seems to be being influenced by contemporary art trends in, in, in Paris. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would be yeah. a that's wonderful guy. I, I would. Uh, that's something I really wish I could find out more about, and uh, and have more time to study the cards and glean more of that information. But there are two of the uh, seascapes that uh, show the, his love for contemporary or for great artists, and in which he uh, inscribes the name Turner at the bottom of the card. So he's clearly been looking at Turner in the National Gallery in London. Uh, because he lived in London for about seven or eight years. And the other thing that we should uh, uh, note is that he uh, wrote all the cards to Kate in English, even though he's a Frenchman, but many of the cards have French phrases in them, like uh, so one of the decapitation scenes shows the uh, guillotine and inscribed on the guillotine is entrez sans frapper, enter without knocking. And that phrase appears in different places too. And then I just noticed this morning in uh, one of the the cards uh, that were sent to Kate in uh, Barak Près du Calais, where she was staying in a pension that also had a charcuterie, that uh, uh, on one of the pigs, it's, uh, there's inscribed the phrase, retraite uh, de uh, cochon. No, maison de retraite pour cochon. Retirement home for pigs. <laughs> so that kind of sense of humor also comes into play in the, those cards as well. So yeah, I would like to know more about who his artistic influences were and the ongoing, perhaps Guy is gonna find out more and other people looking at them will be able to tell me more. There's Turner, uh, but there's one little landscape where I, he must've been looking at Monet at some point. There's others, one of the self-portraits reminds you of a Gauguin self-portrait. So, I mean, there are these associations that you can make whether they were deliberate, whether he was actually looking at them, actually influenced, there's no way of really knowing for sure. 
as there is no way of really knowing everything for sure about these cars. They remain mysteries. It's really nice in the exhibition that uh, Pierre, we have two of the cards that you framed, uh, framed as double-sided uh, and, and, and shown so that we can see both the recto and the verso. And I think that's uh, a fantastic way to understand the way in which um, he was choosing his commercial postcards. Uh, and, and he was clearly being selective about it. Uh, Guy, of course, your, your, your academic research has focused on postcard correspondence. And uh, you, you touched on this a little bit previously, but I wonder if you can expand on it and speak a little bit about um, how Leon's practice for these postcards compare to those of his contemporaries. Yes, um, I think it, it's hard to appreciate just what an exciting technology, and I think of it as a technology, the postcard, how, how exciting it, it, it was for people. Um, and in a sense, the number of, of, of factors which came together in this period between 1900 and, and, and 1914 that makes what people refer to as the golden age of postcards. Um, we go from um, quite drab postcards before uh, before the, the 20th century. So when postcards were introduced in the 1870s, um, they looked something like this, or exactly like this. This is an 1875 postcard um, that was sent in the UK. And what's uh, interesting about it, I suppose, to a modern eye is that it's, um, it has no image. The, the front is the address side and then you have the message on the back. And in, in the UK, it stayed like that right into the, into the 1890s. Um, there was a monopoly of, of, uh, within, within the UK, um, a firm called De La Rue were, produced all the postcards. And it was only because postcards were becoming increasingly popular in, in, in Europe, in Germany and in France uh, as well in the 1890s, uh, that there was this um, pressure in the UK um, to sort of liberate the postcard market and the the post office al allowed this um, and what you had was then this um, craze that, that emerges that takes advantage of the fact that so many more so many people can now read and write um, because education was 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 more widely available um, so that most homes had someone in in the house that could read and read and write um, the postal service um, got better and better uh, in, in, in the UK and France, such that more and more regular deliveries took place, um, such that in London, um, at the peak, there were 12 deliveries a day. So that's one an hour. So you could send a postcard in the morning, it would arrive at lunchtime, and then you could reply at lunchtime and it would get to your destination within the city um, by five or six o'clock. So there was an instant element to the to the postcard that made it extremely exciting. There were more people with some um, disposable income and, th and the postcards were incredibly cheap because printing technologies were improving all the time. Um, and lots of commercial publishers were able to, to make a lot of money um, out of this. And there was this and they would encourage the collecting craze. So. Yes, it, um, the postcard was like it was in later of the 20th century, a holiday item as more and more people went on day trips to the seaside because the transport systems were, the trains were, were better. Um, but people were also sending them simply to collect them, simply to request something, you know, rather than write a, write a formal letter, you would send a postcard. Um, so you had this, this, this booming industry um, which people would take advantage of and play with. And, and so um, people would uh, draw on the front, add figures to the front. Um, they would uh, create, I mean, I've got one here, which is, which is a, a hand-drawn postcard. And that's all that was sent through the post. I mean, you know, there's nothing on this side because the address is, is there with, 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 with the stamp. Um, 
or people would uh, perhaps more more elaborate cards like this but there, there was they were still they were they and um, people would play with the form so here the lady who's or the man who's um pushing the cart says that he's nearly knocked my head he says on the on the, on the top of the postcard mm -hmm. um so leon wasn't you know he wasn't the only person um uh creating using the postcard as a as a as a site for creativity but having said that um and and partly this relates to i suppose how the cards have survived because typically cards once they go into the the postcard collecting world they get split up and they're, they're just single cards um that that are bought leon's card and i think it's because they were so beautiful um because they were so so important that they were able to survive as a set together and that means that we have we're in a quite a unique position really of, of, of having a, a set um that that he's able to show us um what people did with postcards um over over a period of time and, and that is that is quite quite unique about the collection mm. Thank you for that insight. I, I remember as a young art history undergrad and, and grad student collecting postcards from different museums of artwork from around the world that I would then sort of work into my research. And it reminds me a little bit about that. And, and it's amazing how, uh, how that industry progressed really. And it looks like the message, the, the first postcard you showed us from 1875 just had that one line. And it was basically about responding, right? What is that text? Can you read what the text says there? Yeah, they were they were generally business messages. I mean, that's what they that's what they were used for. They were used for a base a basic admin a business administration. Um, so it says um, memorandum. Um, if you have not written me by the post, please report progress by return. Um, so. Th the the postcard was it was a was a handy object for for, for business um before the images um arrived. i mean occasionally you do come across hand-drawn cards from the 1870s um and, but they're, and they're they're very exciting to, to to find but certainly not the love notes that we see leon sending to his family members <laughs> I, i've never seen i've never seen a love note on on, on, a, on a drab 1870s card no <laughs> Maybe they just don't exist anymore. Maybe they didn't survive. <laughs> um, Pierre, I, I'd love to... What's that, Pierre? Read and burn. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, Pierre, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your family's plans for um, these cards. Of course, uh, they, as I say, they've all been framed and presented um, as, as per each collector within the exhibition. Uh, so those will all go back to the individual family members uh, from around the world, North America and, and elsewhere. Um, but what happens to the project, the, the Leon Coupe project that you have uh, so diligently put online? Do you have future plans for these? Well, I have plans and I have hopes, maybe more hopes than plans and nothing concrete. Uh, first of all, I don't want to return any of the frame sets to anybody. Uh, I think I'm going to keep them all. <laughs> and they'll have to fight me tooth and nail to get them back. But no, uh, what I'd like to see if possible, there are two things, two routes that I would like to have happen now. Uh, I would like to see the possibility of this exhibition traveling to another city. It would be lovely to be able to show them in London and uh, have Guy in London as a curator for the show there. Uh, other curators have already seen the show and have suggested that they should be exhibited in Montreal or Paris or Tokyo, where they might uh, receive a good reception, uh, according to this person. Uh, but I think further exhibition possibilities are th something that I'd like to explore. But another thing that I, would, that I hope for is for a book publication. The catalog that we've done with this exhibition at the West Vancouver Art Museum is really beautiful. And there are 60 reproductions in it with Guy Atkins text, your text and my text. But I think the postcards as a collection deserve a larger publication so that we can see the front and back of each card simultaneously on a page. 
And I think that uh, it would be nice to find someone more skilled than me, it probably is Guy or you, Hillary, that to, uh, to write a full text about them, to explore them in all of their dimensions. Uh, I think that would be something that would be lovely to, to have done. Uh, whether there's a big market for that, I don't know. Uh, but again, this is all speculation. For me, the, uh, the, as an artist, the, my, my most, my, 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 my deepest feeling for them is as aesthetic objects. There are the historical associations, the revelations, uh, the implications. There are the family stories that are all attached to this. But for me, I see them purely as works of art now. And, uh, and I'm always knocked out by uh, not only how beautiful they are, et cetera, but how, how fluent uh, Leon's hand was, uh, how, how good he was at drawing with pen and ink, and then with brush and ink. When you look at them more closely, you see that he used a variety of techniques to, uh, to accomplish these things. So I would like to see them shared for, on that basis for their aesthetic value with a larger audience. And I think that it would be important to have in a full book so that they all could be seen at once. So plans, aspirations, hopes, dreams, uh, let's just see what unfolds. I mean, this Thanks. exhibition is, and, uh, and the catalog has already brought new attention to the cards and brought new family members into the picture as well. So I'm now beginning to learn more about uh, the Barlow Hunt side of the family from people, relatives in England that have recently contacted me. So the project itself is, you know, growing in that dimension as well. Anyway, we shall see. I, I think for now we cannot, we, we who do not own any of these cards can be very envious of you who do because they are such lovely things. Thank you. I think this is probably a, a really good opportunity to wrap up, but I just wanted to give Guy and Pierre the opportunity to say any last remarks that you would like to add to our discussion, anything that we didn't cover perhaps. Guy? Um, no, I, th I think that, 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 was, that was really, Lovely and really, it was really nicely balanced across the different themes of the of the cards. And you can, it is so. I mean, that's the. That, I think that's the wonderful thing about postcards. Actually, is that they they seem to open up. You know, they're restless objects. You know, you you, yes. you turn them over and they've got their text, their image, um, their 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 high art, their low art. You know, they 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 they're fragile, and yet they last. You know. And you know, and I think that's what was so exciting and um, about you know that the, the Pierre and, and and Hillary you've made this this exhibition happen is just is, is just absolutely wonderful and it's uh, uh, yeah I, I'm 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 absolutely sure it will be an exhibition that that goes on elsewhere. Um, yeah, it feels very authentic. I think that's the other, another aspect of it. It's quite rare that you you get to work on a project which which feels like it's got an energy of its own, and and this this has. Um, we know there isn't you, all sorts of people find the cards compelling, um, and they are able to find their own particular interest in them, um, and that's that's really special. It reminds. And I've talked to Pierre about this before. But I'm struck by the parallel between the the Pierre Coupe, the, the Leon Coupe project and the works of Vivian Mayer, the street photographer. Um, now I know they're very different artists, but there is something um, incredibly authentic about the works, um, and that they weren't necessarily made for a, a big audience, and that 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 comes through when you get up close to, to the works um, and that makes them incredibly human. Um, and yeah, there's a, there's a momentum within the project that, that, that comes from that. Absolutely, thank you, Guy. Pierre, did you want to yeah. add anything before we conclude? No, I think that's a wonderful way to end. I think that's just gorgeous. 
And I want to thank both of you so much for your participation and your and your 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 support for this project and for Leon's work. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Uh, so the exhibition, My Dearest Kate, runs at the West Vancouver Art Museum until March 12th. Uh, the Art Museum is open Tuesday to Saturday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, and we're happy for visitors to drop in during those hours. They don't need to pre-book. Uh, we have some excellent programming that's coming up, uh, including a virtual postcard printing workshop with Mark Johnson on February 24th. And I encourage you to check out our website, westvancouverartmuseum.ca for further details about our upcoming events. Uh, as Pierre mentioned earlier, we produced a beautiful exhibition designed by Stacey Noyes of Liz Form. Uh, which is available for purchase for $15 from our shop. And that includes uh, excellent essays by Pierre and by Guy. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you all at the West Vancouver Museum very soon. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, Guy. Have a good evening. Thanks, Hillary. Thank you, Guy. Thank you.